Super Cross Riders of the 125 West are gathering once again to go racing. They've practiced, signed autographs, and now they're ready to go in the city of Houston. In the 125 Supercross class, Chad Reed decided to let someone else win this week as the 125 East Riders take a break. James Stewart may be the one to take the checkers as the 16-year-old rookie goes for his third win of the year tonight in Houston. One of the three original Supercross venues, the historic Astrodome in Houston, Texas. It's the sixth round of the 125 West EA Sports Supercross presented by Speed Stick. Hello, everyone. I'm Art Ekman. For the last five races, we have covered the 125 East Division, where we've seen a young Australian named Chad Reed simply dominate. He's won five consecutive races. He's looked poised, patient, and strong in his very first season of an American Supercross, leading that division by 23 points. Joining us, David Bailey, former champion. And David, the situation in the 125 East is much different than the 125 West, which we'll see tonight. In the West, we've had four different winners in five rounds, and I think the most electrifying winner so far. Absolutely. James Stewart was just spectacular in the first five rounds of the series. Now, during that six-week break, we switched to the East, and Chad Reed showed his impressive riding style. He has been unbelievable, winning every single race, and shows that he is flawless. Now, while most people agree that Stewart is faster than Reed, he does have a flaw. Earlier today, he crashed for the second time. We're going to take a look at this right after the finish line jump into a rhythm section. Gets a little squirrely, goes down, and breaks his right foot. He got up from that. He limped around a little bit, went back out, and turned the fastest lap of the practice session. So we'll see if he can do what Chad Reed did and ride through an injury. All the talk has been about Stewart so far this season because he's been so impressive. But believe it or not, there are other riders in this championship race. Let's go down to Davy Coombs now for more on that. Though James Stewart is the talk of this class, three others have won races in the 125 West region. Travis Preston, David Pingree, and Brock Sellers are all Supercross veterans compared to the 16-year-old Stewart. But this year, they've all had to take a back seat to this rookie in the public eye, and I can tell you, none of them are very happy about it. Now, keep an eye out for Sellers here at the Astrodome. At the last round of this region we had at Anaheim all those weeks ago, it was Sellers, not Stewart, who won. And he's had a lot of time to build up off that momentum. With a good start tonight here at the Astrodome, it might just be two in a row for Brock Sellers. Now, with our speed stick track map, here's David. You can see the longest start of the year right here into a tricky first turn. If you ask 20 riders here in each class this weekend what they think of this track, they're all going to say they love the layout and they love the dirt. But like always, it's going to come down to the whoop section right there. And this triple jump at the finish line, 125s are having a hard time getting over it. Our Suzuki storyline tonight, the most electrifying rider of the, the year is back. He will have five weeks off to affect James Stewart. We'll have to see. Who wants second place in the West? One point separates second from third. Will Gossler, Tedesco, and someone else make it five winners in six races? Our starting grid, Travis Preston, a winner of the opener this year. Ivan Tedesco, he's in third in points. David Pinkery, winner of the third round. Decker, short, Payne. Billy Lanovich was third in his last race as he raced the other division. The 32nd board is up. We're getting set for our first qualifying round of the 125 action from the... Astrodome in Houston, Texas. The fans are still piling in from a traffic jam outside, and we're ready to go here on the turf. Pingree with a nice breakaway. Oh, a big jam up. And Lanovich. breaking through is Travis Preston. It looked like Billy Lanovich, there he is, kind of hobbling around. It looked like he had the whole shot. Front end went away from him, and everybody went down. Lanovich was injured earlier, testing his skills in the 125 East, as he was not in the uh, top 10 in Caduceo. But way out in front here at our opening qualifier is Travis Preston from Hispernia, California, on the Amsoil Dog Martin Honda. Watch, watch uh, Lanovich right there in the middle of your screen. Front end goes away, and he sticks his leg out and hyperextends his knee, it looked like. Pingree getting darted around there in the middle, and the guy that always comes out smelling like a rose, Travis Preston. 
Boy, he's been awfully lucky. But you know, he's at the right place at the right time to take advantage of the break, Steve. Absolutely. I talked to him this afternoon, and he's tied with a sore foot. He's approaching the triple. Where yesterday I watched him in practice. Imagine if he jumps this thing, he goes for it. Imagine midair right there. He didn't have the speed. He jumped off the bike and landed on his feet. Tedesco in second. Decker in third. Pingree is up to fourth with Smith in uh, fifth as we turn into money coming through. Billy Payne, 82, short 69. Turbo Week going down, collects another rider. Number three, 33 is Turbo. That was Shane Bass and the Suzuki just going around the inside. The record is number 96. Bad start for Shane Bass. He's been working with Ryan Hughes. He's starting to get a little faster, a little better on the Supercross stuff. He favors more of the outdoors, but he's learning indoors. Remember, nine riders qualify directly to the main event after each qualifying round of the 125s. The rest will go to the LCQ, where the top four finish out the 22 gate for the 125s here in Houston. Tedesco. Tedesco. Yeah, he has been. I've talked about what an improvement he made over last year. Watched him in the practice session. And, you, know, you guys get a little bit overshadowed by all the excitement that Stewart causes out there. But Tedesco has been fast. He's like a kind of like the 125 version of Michael Rocco. He's good enough to podium, but we tend to focus on the, the guys that are getting making the most noise out there. It's ironic uh, that he got through that first turn crash because that's been his big problem uh, this year as far as getting up in the contention, getting through that first turn. Yeah, everybody had a, a lot of the contenders that we thought would be up there to Danny Smith, Sellers, Pangry. We've all struggled with it. Stewart's the only guy that's been able to get a bad start and turn something good out of it, going all the way to second place in Anaheim from dead last. Tedesco and Decker are top three with Henry and Boy. On the bubble is Morgan battling it out with number 58, Johnson. Right there is 87, Decker. Decker has made two main events and is coming off an outstanding uh, performance. He moved into the top ten with a good ride from 22nd to 9th to the last 125 West race. Danny Smith trying to work his way up. Danny Smith's got to be one of the unluckiest riders I've ever witnessed in Supercross. The guy has had contending potential. He's almost won races several times, but the injury bug seems to catch him every year, David. Yeah, he has had a tough time, but I'll tell you what, one guy that I think topped him, Shane Bentley. I saw him in the pit this afternoon, and I, I said that to him. I go, you got to be the unluckiest guy there is. He was all ready to go, and... I looked at him and said, you're going to be ready for the outdoors. And he looked at Mitch Payton. It's, it's up to Mitch. And Mitch goes, if I see him run and ride and, and train, and I'll let him go for it. But it's just going back to Danny Smith here, all the bad luck he's had. He has the speed to win races. He was in good position at the last round in Anaheim until he fell down. And that's what uh, Stewart can go down and have to come from behind. Bentley, a 125 West champion, also got injured during his championship season. We take a look at Decker. Smith would have get around Decker by now, but Decker's riding solid. He's only going for the double right there. Looked like Smith was in triple. The yellow bullet points signify that they are in uh, contention for that transfer spot in the top nine. You know, our watching Decker here, still running a solid second. Danny Smith hasn't given him any trouble like I thought he would to this point. And, he was injured pretty serious back in Las Vegas. I don't remember, it's like five or six years ago now. And I really thought that was the final blow of his career. That was going to take him out. But what a comeback. He's, he had the greatest results in main events, but the way he's riding here tonight so far, it's good all change. His best finish was a seventh in San Diego. I, too, David, thought it, his career was all over. And it seems to me, I remember, it was a broken neck, and, a, and he put a plate in his neck or something like that. But, uh, yeah, I've, I'd written him off, too, but here he is. Doing a fine job behind number 29. And that is, of course, Travis Preston from Bernie, California, the Amsoil Honda. Captured his second career 125 Supercross win in Anaheim at the opener. Kept smartly through the field after an 11th place start. And uh, it was another surprise victory like he had here in Houston before. Yeah, he's, 
one of those guys who just keeps putting himself in the right position. And it was here in Houston last year when I really felt like this guy's got some potential. White flag is flying. Last lap underway for number 29, Travis Preston. He's won another heat this year. In fact, he's won two heats. Both the, the last two races at Anaheim. But the uh, main events have been a different story. He crashed on the second lap of the main event at Anaheim 2 for a 17th. Came back for a fifth place after an 11th place started Anaheim 3. This is the CE Mountain right here. The triple staircase, 15 feet up to that platform for 180 degree corner and back down. Starting to get a deep rut. The CE Altman Mountain. In honor of one of the co-founders of Supercross in America. Flag is waving. Looking back, I don't know why. It's Travis Preston. He has plenty of time to look back as he dominates this first qualifying round. Let's take a look at the final transfer spot. It should be Johnson and Morgan going at it. That's Morgan, number 183. If he's able to make this main event, it'll be the first one he's ever made. He missed it by one. Out west. Morgan is in that last spot. And the winner, Travis Preston. We'll have to check the official notification to see if Morgan was really listed in the right spot. He's now listed in 10th with Bess taking number nine. As we take a look at the Honda results page, Preston, Tedesco, Decker, Danny Smith, Billy Payne, our top five. Good to see Payne off that injured list. Andrew Short, Pingree, Isaiah Johnson, Shane Bess. They qualify for the main event, Brandon Morgan, and others go on to the LCQ. We'll have the second qualifying round to the Houston Astrodome, but the 125 is coming up next. Only in theaters May 10. EA Sports Supercross is brought to you by... Suzuki, the reigning AMA 125 Eastern Region Supercross and FIM World 250 Motocross Champion. By EA Sports. If it's in the game, it's in the game. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Welcome back to the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, where Travis Preston got his very first 125 victory. Well, he's taken another victory of sorts here today the first qualifying round. Let's go to Davey. Travis, you must love this place. Yeah, Texas is really good for me. I've, I've always liked this state. Uh, the stadium's really nice. Everything's nice out here. And I always end up doing pretty good, too. Track looks loose tonight. Soil, your kind of soil? Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of funny because some corners you have good traction up high, but then you go low like in a rut or something. It's kind of slippery, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Nice ride. Good luck in the main event. Thanks. Checking out the starting lineup now. It's Stewart, their points leader, but two-time winner this season. Brock Sellers, who won Anaheim three this year. Christopher Gossler and the Amsoil Honda. Johnson, Travis Elliott, Jeff Gibson. Once again, going for the Ironman as he's qualified for both the 125 and 250s. He's done that four times this year. Gibson, keep your eye on him. Oh, a real trooper, of, number 275. Speaking of a trooper and an Ironman, Stewart. <laughs> yes. Broken Went foot down at all. practice, broke his right foot. Now, the good thing about that is after this race, he has a two-week break. Also, it's his right foot, which is his breaking foot. If it was his left foot and he had to shift, I can tell you from experience, that hurts. So he might not he might not even be able to notice his foot hurt. You just heard from somebody that broke both feet. I broke both cross. feet several times. <laughs> I broke my foot here, in fact. There's his right foot on the ground. I haven't seen him walk in the last couple of hours, but he went out after that crash and turned the fastest lap time at the end of practice, the 105, almost two seconds faster than everybody else. Ford sideways. We've got several excellent starters here with the second qualifying heat for 125 action for the Astrodome. Gassler on the inside. Beautiful move by Stewart. Casey Lytle in second. And Stewart battling with Lytle for the number two position. Stewart looks to his inside. He gets hung up on that turn, and Casey Lytle takes over second place. It's Gutzler at first, but blitzing the whoops. Oh, my goodness. You're not going to find anybody faster than, for, than Stewart. Maybe the guy in the lead, Gutzler, was out to say that Gutzler is the only rider this week in a team match. Stewart's 
Pete, I talked to him after practice. He said he jumped in behind him yesterday and a couple times today, and he didn't feel intimidated at all. He said, I can go with stay upright, but you can say the same thing for James Stewart. The break came just at the right time for Gosler, number 90 of the Honda. He just felt he was getting faster and faster in practice. Watch Stewart. He tries to get in there and turn tight. He could have put a block pass on Gosler, but he decided, nah, I don't want to start that already. I'll just turn, and since they regroomed the track in practice, he found a slip spot. Already goes to the lead with a block pass. Gosler went wide to triple the finish line jump, and Stewart can't do that with him on your tail. Let's go track side to Davey. Well, if you guys are wondering how James Stewart's even able to ride with that, the asterisk back doctor, Dr. John Bodner, spent about a half hour Stewart in the Kawasaki truck, put all kinds of tape on it. He also had it elevated for about two hours, tried to keep the foot higher than his heart. By the results of it, it looks like he's doing pretty darn good for someone with a broken foot. Boy, the top five has got some winners, I'll say that. As Stewart, of course, in his rookie year, the youngest ever to win a race in 125 action. Gosler has not won yet, but is very fast. Buckaloo and Sellers and Lytle. Sellers and Lytle, both winners in 125 action previous. There's 90, that's Gosler. You can see him trying to get on the gas a little bit early there, trying to match the pace of Stewart, who's inching away right now. Almost lost the front end himself. So when I saw Gosler matching Stewart's speed yesterday and a little bit today in the practice session, I wasn't able to relax because it looks like he's a little bit on the edge. Stewart's able to run this pace, that first lap of 104. Unbelievable. And he's doing it, it looks pretty smooth. Check out your favorite rider as we go through the field now. You saw John down. Oh, I, I should say Seller. It's number 18. Fire through that picture. Stewart, Gossler, Butler, Sellers, Lytle, Woods, Elliott, Sorby, Ahoff, Young, Gibson, Johnson, Walker, McBride, Reed, Viejo, Cook. And Graham 358, but right in front right there. That's corner speed right there. That's not sped up. Don't adjust your TV set. That's how fast this kid can go. I'll tell you what, Art, I've been around the sport 30 years, and I've never seen anybody as fast and stylish as this kid. He's innovative, he's young, he's Kobe Bryant on a motorcycle. In your opinion, should he stay another year at 125 speed this fast? Yes. Go through the stages. Why not go out there and leave a number one plate on your bike? Ride it one more time, defend it. If he was 19 or 20, I'd say move up. He's got plenty of time. Only 16 years old. He might not want to run number one. He loves running that 259 in honor of Tony Haynes. And it'd be interesting to see if he has the opportunity to change, if he will. Ricky did. For those of you who don't know, Tony Haynes, a childhood uh, rider with Stewart in a very, very bad accident. And Stewart dedicates every win to him. Now, Stewart's fast through the whoops, but he doesn't look very smooth through there. He actually went down in the first practice session there hard. He didn't get up and go around the rest of the lap and come back to it. He cut across the track, went over the triple, went right back through him even faster. This kid isn't intimidated by anything. James Sir was telling me yesterday, David, that he wished that they had signed up for the 125 East instead of the West. He really did not like the six weeks and five races off in between. It was just a boring time for him. He's going to like it now. That two-week break to help his foot heal is coming at a perfect time. But I know in the six weeks, you know, we talked about how much this kid learned and how fast he learned. He looks like a different rider in some places after that break and he did it the first five rounds and he's got some new style things that he's doing he's quite a bit faster although he fell in crack and he looks pretty smooth here so far for those fans of Viejo out of Mexico he went down he'll have to go to the LCQ as we take a look at our leader zipping through those moves that last lap of 106 that was mistaken the 104 I was looking at that was the first lap and they, they don't get a full lap because they take it from the start so his lap times were 106 compared to Preston in the first heat race at 107. So Stewart's the fastest with a broken foot. After that 11th place in the uh, final Anaheim race, he said it was a wake-up call for me. It really gave me some motivation during the break to work hard. Now take a look at this in slow motion. The body stays still. The arms and legs are the shock absorbers. A lot of guys commenting on, man, that bike is fast. See, 
was reluctant to put that right foot down. This kind of jam just kicks it out there, but if he has to tap it, the way he saved that crash in the opening lap with another foot, he would feel it. Once again, not much foot, of course, for Stewart. Stewart goes for Buckaloo Sellers Elliott, our top five. The top nine qualify for the main event out of this qualifying game. Earlier today, Stewart was tripling twice to this section of jump. I don't think he's going to show us all of the good stuff right now. He doesn't have to. Buckler went down. So our third place rider, Buckler, behind Gosler in front of Sellers, went down in a loop section. Another heat victory. And we take a look at the final transfer spot. Woods, number 62. Young is number 782. It looks like Gibson, the Iron Man, is going to have to go to the LCQ to make the main event of the 125s. Well, now that Stewart's able to stay warmed up, that foot should be better. But it's, when you have to sit around for a long time, that the pain can set in and the emotional side of what's to still to come, that 20 and 15 lap main event. So Stewart picks off his fifth consecutive qualifying heat win. Gosler, but second, Sellers, Elliott, and Lytle, the top five. And you see there, Jeff Gibson did make the field, number nine on that last lap. We'll be right back to the Astrodome with more 125 action right after these words. back to the Reliant Astrodome in Houston, Texas, as the fans are awaiting the main event. First of all, let's take a look, though, at the upcoming events. As Supercross heads to St. Louis, Missouri on April 6th. Then it's on to the Silverdome at Pontiac, Texas Stadium, and the Winter Olympic Stadium at Salt Lake City on the 27th of April. Let's go to Davey Combs. Well, James, I know that couldn't have felt good. Your foot had to be hurting. Yeah, I think I broke my foot, and uh, it's not feeling that good out there, but I'm going to try my best and uh, see what happens. But, I mean, my Kawasaki is working good out there, so that's all I can say. Did it bother you at all out there when you were landing off those big jumps? When did it bother me? <laughs> it hurts. Good luck in the main, James. Thanks. Our EA Sports Rider of the Week, the 125's James Stewart. He came into Houston as the points leader and a two-time winner on the season. He encourages me a lot. Like, um, I know, like, when he tells me to do something, like, if he encourages me, that means I gotta do it. So, <laughs> he doesn't tell me to do it, but he's like, oh, you need to do this. So, I do it. Probably the hardest adjustment was knowing that these guys are really fast and they was going to be there the whole time. And uh, pretty much like in the amateur, I just got out front and I was gone. The biggest thing I learned from Chad is consistency. He seems like he, he gets out to his pace and he runs that pace. And no matter if somebody passes him or what, he seems like the guy who will run that pace the whole time. And he waits for them to slip up when they do, he gets them. I've been doing a lot of hard work here. Um, from the six weeks off, I haven't been slacking. And so I've been doing my homework while I've been gone. And pretty much I need to get a good start and stay on the podium the whole time. That last Anaheim kind of woke me up again that I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm coming in here as an underdog again. I, I didn't win the last one. So I'm coming just to have fun and try to stay on the podium. A late back James Stewart in that interview. Here's his statistics coming into Houston. He's gritting his teeth, though, as he awaits the main event with a broken foot. Our Honda close-up is with former champion Jeff Emig. If you weren't blessed with great starting skills and techniques like myself, you could use a little help. This year in Supercross, we've seen the emergence of what could be called a fork hold-down starting device. Now, it's been around for a number of years, but it's just 
came to our series this year. It's a device that used to hold the front of the bike down on the starting gate. Now I'll show you what they do. When the rider's on the line, he reaches forward, pulls the front end down, hooks the front forks in, and then what that does is it, it, it holds the front of the bike down probably three inches from what it would normally be. So it puts you in a better position to launch out of the gate. David Bailey says it's a fork holder downer thing. Does it do any good, David? <laughs> well, you know, I was talking to Kevin Wyndham about it last week, and he's in question about what kind of traction you're going to get. It tends to lighten up the rear end a little bit, but one thing that it does help, what they're trying to accomplish here, is to not get a wheelie off the gate and have to let off. Who said Ryan Clark can't talk and ride at the same time? Yesterday, he did a great job as he took us through a lap telling us all about it. Down a pretty long start straight away into the first turn. Got a little rhythm coming up on here. Into a triple. That's actually the big triple. I overjumped it a little bit. Here's where the whoop section is going to be tomorrow. They haven't put that in yet. Square this down. Into a little rhythm section. Double, 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 single into a left hand turn. It's a real slippery right here. A lot of rhythm section this weekend. Another double triple into a tight right hander. You can see how the ruts are forming. Whoop section. Here's a real unique section. A couple step ups, turn back around, and back down. Here's the other big triple we're coming up on. It's about 70 feet into the outside here. Nice firm step on, step off, and then into another step on. You can either step off that or go inside. Choose to double it this round. Here you have an option either to go inside or outside. One for return, the LCQ results, and the 125 main event with James Stewart and his friends coming up next. is a family affair here at the Astrodome, 44,528 in attendance to watch this 125 main event. Pay-per-view coming up on May 4th, the Las Vegas Finals. Make your plans right now, East versus West. For the 125 shootout, that'll be exciting. Seeing Stewart versus Reed. Nissan last chance qualifier results. Matt Walker, a last-minute signee before the season started. A pro circuit getting into the main event, winning that last chance qualifier, the top four including Turbo Reef, filling out the starting gate. Let's check out the Honda starting lineup right now. You saw James Stewart, Eric Sorby. That's an interesting story by, once again, Pro Circuit. He has just come over from France, has signed to start an American U.S. Supercross career. Thanks to David Billiman, who uh, gave Mitch Payton a call. Mitch Payton, uh, his horse is depleted from injuries. He's had a tough time, but he goes ahead and scoops up. Sorby, and from what I saw in practice, he looked pretty solid. He looked good in his heat race. It's Matt Walker, 68. He's pretty far to the outside. That's because he had to come out of that last chance qualifier. And Stewart limped to his bike. Car. He is really favoring that right foot. But tonight, he's a little bit luck. He's got eight left-hand turns and only four right-hand turns. Board sideways. We're almost set to go with the 125 main event. And we're off and running in Houston. for James to kickstart that bike with his right foot broken. After watching him limp to the line and having to see him start that bike, he looked angry, Art. He was shaking his head like, come on, guys. Let's take another look and see what happened. He got a terrible jump off the gate, went into the corner last. And so, you know, if there's any problem, you're going to get caught up in it. Josh Woods, number 62, goes down right in front of Stewart, over the bars. He looks at Josh like... Come on, man. Can't you guys ride around a corner without falling down? So now his problems are got worse. He's got to come from last. Casey Lytle of Racer's Edge also involved in that pile up as the battle out front continues now. And number 917, Sorby, who hasn't raced in quite a while, is a former French 250 champion and a European 125 champion. Talking to 
him a little bit today. And he seems very confident. You know, I asked him how he felt. He said, it's all good. You know, and then I talked all oh, about Oh, Chris Gossler down. Gossler, one of the fastest riders on the track, has got a lot of room to make up now. Danny Smith, number 37 of the Suzuki. He gets cut off, cut off by Matt Walker. Walker, number 68, also a pro circuit. Remember, he just came off winning that LCQ, David. The adrenaline is still pumping, and he jumps right into second place. Now, I would like to be next to Mitch Payton right now. He's had a tough season. All these guys getting injured, but it's looking good now. The only two guys he has here running first and second, which is beautiful. Could this be the first pro circuit win of the year in the 125? Webcast. You can hear these races live. ESPN.com, the keyword Supercross. Check it out. You see how far behind Stewart was going to the tail end of the pack. Just behind Gosser. So two fast riders so far. They went one, two in their heat race. They're going to have to come for last. They got the speed to catch these guys. I don't know if Stewart can do it with that foot, but Gosler's got the speed to do it. There's 68 Walker. He's starting to hound his teammate now. Looking for opportunity for a pass. You see Sorby looking over in the air. Just to check it out. Make sure he still had enough room to go wide. We're in a power to go through the woods. Walker very fast through the woods. He hasn't had that experience in Supercross, but he's got great timing. Who's going to come out of this one in front? Matt Walker takes the lead. This could be his first lead ever. What 25 race. Yeah, I don't recall him leading anything before. He's, he's been up front, but not in the event. He didn't get there by luck. He had to work his way up into position. He looked solid. And Danny Smith, Preston, those guys are right there. Tedesco is in position. So the wind's up for grabs amongst about the first five or six. Seems like those two slip fire riders, they got this handled. What a wild is Mitch Payton. Uh, these are last minute the signees. Number 68, Max Walker, signed just before the season started when it was determined that James Stewart would not be on the support Kawasaki team of Pro Circuit, but would be under the Big Ten. That's uh, the Chevy Trucks Kawasaki factory team. And that left the spot open for number 68, Matt Walker, who last time I saw him in Europe, he was still looking for a job. Stewart. Running way back in the pack. He's behind Turbo Reef right there, 333. You see him look over to his left. Okay, still got to pass all those guys. All kinds of surprises already here in the early going of our 125 main Matt Walker and Sorby out in front with Danny Smith. Championship, 830 tonight on ESPN. Welcome back to 125 Action from the Astrodome. All kinds of surprises in the early going. Number 917, Eric Sorby from France in second place to his teammate Matt Walker, who has started to pull away. And Danny Smith now going rubbing a little plastic this time with Sorby, but it doesn't seem to bother the Frenchman. Now, Sorby looks around a lot, so it looks like he's nervous, but I don't think it's a nervous look like he's worried about what's going on back there. He's just going, okay. Can I go wide here and use the line I want, or am I going to get blocked past? Danny Smith, uh, just when you think he's reached a platform for championship success, injuries have taken away his chances in almost every season I can recall him right. Yeah, it's been too bad. I really think that he's got the, the talent to get up and do much better, but it's hard to do that when you keep getting injured and have to keep making comebacks. It just puts a huge dent in your confidence every time. You know who's just being patient back there Art, this whole time, watching all of a sudden fold is Preston. Travis Preston, number 29. You'll see him come into the picture a little bit later as we follow Sorby around and through the whoops. Fishtailing right at the end of the whoops. Dangerous section right there. And Danny Smith goes wide. Now, Smith here last year did not race at Houston. He broke a bone around Titus track after posting three podiums in four races. That's what I meant by every time he gets going real well, something usually happens to him. Good look at the lead. Here's the Honda stopwatch, and we're clocking Walker and Stewart. That's the differentiation between the two, the last lap and this lap. Well, losing two seconds just basically because he's back there in traffic. He's trying to make something happen, but every time he looks like he has a run or something, he's got to go slow through the corner and follow somebody. And it's hard when you're that much faster than some of the other riders to ride through the pack and maintain a fast pace. So you see there's nobody around Walker right now. He's able to ride just the way he wants. 
Walker riding well. Let's check in trackside with Davey Coombs. Jeremy, can you tell how James is when he comes by? Is he giving you any signals? He's not really giving any signals, but, you know, he, he told me he's going to come out here and give it everything he's got. And it's just, you know, he got a bad start. He fell down. It's been rough out there, but I know he's going to give everything he can, and obviously he's out there working as hard as he can right now, and that's what we can do. Beautiful run through the whoops that time. You know, I've talked with Jeremy before about when he was wrenching for John Dowd, and, you know, Stewart reminds me of John Dowd, just that regardless of what plays he's in or what problems he may be having, he's going to give it everything he's got. He's a mechanic. He can't be disappointed no matter what the result, and the guy tries that hard. I'm a little surprised Matt Walker's been able to take away from the field 6.1 seconds. He rode in the 125 East last year for Planet Honda. His best last year was really in his home track, Atlanta, Georgia, where he got a fifth. He also won the LCQ before getting that fifth in Atlanta last year. That seems to be good luck for him, and he spent plenty of time in those things. He's actually missed the main event quite a few times. There was a little bit of a joke over there at the Pro Circuit truck of getting all those number weight, number one plates on the door, maybe putting the Racefax gas card up there. <laughs> I didn't think that was too funny, but it has been a struggle for Walker, and everybody knows he's got the speed to do what he's doing right now. He's just had some bad luck and bad starts but here with the opportunity. He's taking advantage of it. And the fact that he's able to pull away right now really leads me to believe that that battle for second is a little bit of a defensive battle. And it's taking those guys about a second a lap longer to get things taken care of because of all this that's going on. There's Sorby. And he's bending off all kinds of opposition. Number 69, Andrew Short out of Colorado Springs, Colorado on the Suzuki. All kinds of jockeying up there on CE Mountain. Like I said, Preston, just being patient. Now Tedesco has joined the, the battle. Right behind Preston, here comes another block pass. Smith that time, he doesn't go in there and really stick it to short. He just got the pass and gassed it right back out of there. So as long as you do it passes like that, the pace continues fast and they have a chance to stay with Walker. All these riders about the same speed. It's, it's really created an interesting freight train. But Sorby, I feel badly if I ever question his endurance. <laughs> yeah, he's looking solid right here. Here comes Preston on the outside of the loops. Look out. Preston looks back in to see if he's going to get a block pass. But Danny Smith didn't put it to him. Danny instead choosing to go far to far with him. Smart by Preston right there to stay on the inside line because Danny Smith was taking a look at him. Preston would have gone wide to double those first two. That would have been another block pass. He's had a tough time trying to get his way up, but he's been patient. He's waiting for the right time. It looks like he's into third for good now. He go to work on Sorby. He looks back to go, okay, now who's battling with me? It's a different guy. You have to know because these guys all ride a little bit different. Some more aggressive than others. Sorby's 22 years old. His parents got him a minute bike at five years old and uh, he took third in his first race and got all hepped up about it he said and he ended up winning the mini championship that year you know, i was talking to peyton maybe we should put some mirrors on the handlebars of sorby but he won't have to look around so much see if he does it again right here yeah all right mitch mirrors instead of pulling the tear offs <laughs> he, he looks back Look at them. Uh, he gets a little squirrely that time, but Preston has been going faster than anybody through the whoops. Matt Walker looking pretty good out front, but I don't think he's got the, the sheer speed to that whoop section that Preston does. Well, and Sorby, that's one of his weaker spots on the track. That's what might uh, really prove interesting here if Preston can get within a pack position. Out in front. Oh, it's Matt Walker. Boy, does his heart have to be pounding big time right now. Can he win his very first professional Supercross here tonight at the Astrodome? If you're just tuning in, 125 action from Houston, Texas, James Stewart trying to recover from an early crash. Matt Walker, a surprise leader way out in front. And while we were away, number 29, Travis Preston, just passing the young Frenchman, Eric Sorby, for second place. Now, they are removed a little bit from the pack, and it'll be interesting to see if the Frenchman has the endurance to hold on to a podium position in his first American race. Well, here's another look at the pass for the second place. I talked about...
Preston gets through these whoops so much better than everyone else in the class. And of course, Sorby doesn't have whoops in France this big. Pays the price right there as Preston gets around into second for good. Now that's going to be 22 points if he can stay there. And with Stewart clear back in ninth, so it's a big gap of points he's going to make up. And going back to Anaheim, the last round, Stewart finishing 11th and Preston 5th. So these last two rounds, Preston's making up a lot of ground and tightening up the championship race. Yes, earlier in the show when we were talking about the battle for second place and including Travis Preston in that lot, gosh, it looks like he wants a lot more. He, he, he'd like to uh, challenge Stewart for the championship of this division. Well, twice he's been in position to get a main event win, but at the end, been a little bit fortunate if he's in a position if Stewart has more problems. He broke his foot in that second practice session, then crashed, then had to start the bike with that broken foot. So it, it just goes to show that although he's the fastest rider in the world on a 125, he's faster than most 250s, doesn't mean he's going to win the races. He's pressing and putting the pressure on him and forcing Stewart to have to be tough. Chris Gossler at full strength. It shows you how he came back all the way from his going down earlier. He's already back to sixth place. Yeah, an impressive ride. Both Stewart and Gosper, the fastest two riders in this class. It just goes to show the fastest guys don't always win. It's going to be a good run for Gosler. A little bit better than what Stewart's having out here, but of course Stewart not 100% with that broken foot, although after he broke it, he went out and turned a 105 at the end of that practice session and still won his heat race. Run with broken feet before, though. Uh, what about the time in between? Time for swelling, time for all kinds of mental uh, situations to yeah. appear. One more lap for Matt Walker. He's not having anything. You know, the only thing that's going on in his head mentally is, yeah, I'm going to win my first 125 main if I can stay upright. But it was here last year that the leader, who had never been out front or won a Supercross before, Langston, tossed it away with a half a lap to go. And Preston was in second to scoop up the win. We got the same scenario here, so he's got to be careful on this last lap. Failing to qualify in his last two main events, number 68 has a chance to secure his very first professional Supercross victory. He's going to love the Astrodome from now on. Too bad this building isn't going to last much longer. <laughs> That's true. Geez, they keep imploding these buildings. Atlanta Fulton County went. The King Kingdom went down. This one's going down. Three of the venues I used to race in don't even exist anymore. As soon as they knock this one down. Matt Walker can feel it right now. Whoa, whoa he slipped. So he won't be able to trick over the finish line jump, but that doesn't matter. This kid is as happy as you can get with his very first professional Supercross victory and the first win for Pro Circuit Kawasaki. The battle for third, Sorby. Sorry, I might have questioned endurance because he holds off Tedesco for the final podium spot. You can see Gosler go across the finish line and make a little gesture with his head like, oh, I had it. I thought I was going to win tonight. Here comes Walker. Now he gets to do a little styling. He is happy. The guy who didn't have a job before the season started, signed late by Pro Circuit. Boy, what a happy moment for Todd Dunn and the entire technical crew of Pro Circuit as well. This is going to change him. This is a breakthrough win. It's going to take his, his confidence level and his belief in himself to the next level. And he's going to be able to stay up there and ride and expect to be able, on the, be able to be on the podium more often and win more races. Our Suzuki results page right now. Walker Preston and Sorby on the podium with Tedesco and Gosser. Gosser made it all the way back to fifth. That was an incredible ride. The big important one as far as the points are concerned, James Stewart finishing in 10th place. And that foot had to be pounding toward the end of the race day. It hurts. It's going to hurt him now, but he's got a few weeks to recover. He was lucky that it was the brake foot. He didn't have to shift. And that most of the corners were left-handers. But still, a 10th place. He lost a lot of points. It'll be interesting hearing from our young winner, Matt Walker, when we return to the Astrodome in Houston.
Tonight's EA Sports Supercross has been brought to you by Suzuki, the reigning AMA 125 Eastern Region Supercross and FIM World 250 Motocross Champion. By Speedstick, power of nature, for protection that smells good. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Surprise, surprise, Matt Walker wins his very first professional race, beating all the favorites here in the Astrodome. Let's go down to Davy Coles. Matt, I think you just saved Mitch Payton's season. You know what? This guy's put in more work than anybody in the stadium combined. And, uh, you know, everybody, is, it's all about its all about every rider on there. You know, they treat everybody the same. And um, they gave me the opportunity at the last chance, Davey, and, uh, and I capitalized on it. I had a rough four rounds, but I trained my butt off it. I just want to thank Shea Bentley for letting me ride his track. You know, um, everybody that's helped me along the way, I just want to say thanks. And um, this is hopefully this is the first of many more to come. Great night. Thank you. And uh, I couldn't have done it without Racer X, you know, my pictures in Racer X. So. <laughs> Had to throw that in for Davy Grooms, that's for sure. The Suzuki point standings now. We've got ourselves a point race. We do. It's really getting tight. Got a feel for Stewart. Struggle this weekend. The guy was so fast after the practice sessions. Hard not to bet on him for the win. Let's go to Davy. Well, Travis, usually we're at this day and we have guys crashed on a little place in front of you tonight. You just didn't get the start and Walker didn't fall down. Uh, yeah, Walker got a great start. I actually got a good start, but I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. A lot of people got by me, but um, I pulled it back together and ended up doing all right. Our next Supercross telecast will be coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. 10.30 starting time for the 250s. We go back to the 125 East for that round six in St. Louis at 11.30 following the 250 telecast. Coming up next, a season on the break. Art Eckman, David Bailey, David Coops, thank you for being with us. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com.